Here we're going to learn about something called logarithmic differentiation. And the idea here is that sometimes when we have a complicated function, and by that we mean we're taking roots, we're multiplying things together, or we're dividing lots of things, then if we take the natural log of both sides and use some log rules to simplify it, then we can use um, implicit differentiation to find our derivative. Okay, so just kind of off to a side, um, some of the log rules that you should remember from pre-calc or algebra, um, and this would work for log of any base, but we'll just talk about with natural logs. If we have natural log of a times b, we're multiplying two things. That's the same thing as natural log of a plus natural log of b. You can break it into two natural logs. Um, if you're dividing two things, so you have natural log of a divided by b, you can break it into two logs, natural log of A minus natural log of B. Okay, and if you have natural log of, let's say, A raised to a power R, well, the power comes down in front as multiplication. It becomes R natural log of A. Okay, so those, that's not calculus. Those are just logarithm rules. So you'll see that it takes... Um, multiplication where with derivatives we would have to use the product rule and changes it into addition where we can just take the derivative of each piece. It takes um, a division where we would have to use the quotient rule and turns it into subtraction and the power we'd have to use the chain rule and it just brings it down in front. Okay so here the first thing I'm gonna do is rewrite this as y equals x times x plus 1 to the 1 half power, since taking a square root is the same as the 1 half power. Now, what we want to do, since we have multiplication and powers here, is we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So the left-hand side will stay natural log of y. The right-hand side, we're going to use our rule. So first I can bring the 1 half down, so we're going to have 1 half. And then we would have natural log of x times x plus 1. And with this multiplication, we can break it into two logs where we're adding. Now, since we have this 1 half out in front, we're going to have to distribute that 1 half. And what we get is natural log of y equals 1 half natural log of x plus 1 half natural log of x plus 1. And now we want to take the derivative of both sides. So on the left-hand side, we have natural log of y. Remember, the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. So here we would have 1 over y, and then we have to multiply by dy dx, since we took a derivative of y. Then we have 1 half. We have natural log of x, so the derivative is 1 over x plus 1 half. The derivative of x over 1 would be 1 over x plus 1. We have to think of the chain rule. We would multiply by the derivative of x plus 1, but the derivative of x plus 1 is just 1, so um, we don't have to worry about multiplying too much. Okay, now to solve for dy dx, the only thing we need to do is multiply both sides by y. And I'll write this as 1 over 2x plus 1 over 2 times x plus 1. Okay, now we know what y is equal to in this case. We know y is equal to the square root of x times x plus 1. So we can actually put that in for y so that our whole answer is in terms of x. So dy dx or our y prime is equal to the square root of x times x plus 1 times 1 over 2x plus 1 over 2x plus 1. And that would be our final answer there. Okay, let's try it again with number 2 here. We've got y equals x times x plus 1 times x plus 2. Now, you could use this by using the product rule um, more than once. But what we can also do is take the natural log of both sides. So we have natural log of y. And here, since we're multiplying all of them, it'll become natural log of x plus natural log of x plus 1 plus natural log of x plus 2. Okay, same thing like we did before. We're going to take the derivative of both sides. So we'd get 1 over y 
dy dx equals 1 over x plus 1 over x plus 1. Again, you're multiplying by the derivative of x plus 1, but that's just 1. Plus 1 over x plus 2. Again, the derivative of that is just 1. So now to solve for dy dx, we multiply both sides by y. And we know what y is, so instead of just putting y, I'm going to put in what y is equal to x, x plus 1 plus 2. And if we want to distribute this term so that we can simplify, we would get dy dx equals, well this one would cancel out the x, so we'd have x plus 1 times x plus 2. The second one would cancel out the x plus 1, so we'd have x times x plus 2. And the last one, we'd have x times x plus 1. And if you really needed to, you could FOIL that out and combine like terms. But for our purposes, we can leave it like that. OK, we've got one more here that's a little complicated. So we have y equals the cube root of x times x minus 2 over x squared plus 1. So First, I'm going to write this as y equals x times x minus 2 all over x squared plus 1 to the 1 third power, because taking a cube root is the same as the 1 third power. So when I take the natural log of both sides, first thing, the 1 third can come down. Okay, now anything that we're, we're going to distribute the one third as we go along, so it'll be in front of each of our terms. The things that we're multiplying that are in the numerator, we'll put a plus between, and then we'll subtract the thing we're dividing by. So we have natural log of y equals one third natural log of x plus one third natural log of x minus two minus one third natural log of x squared plus one. OK, so now taking the derivative of both sides, we get 1 over y dy dx equals 1 third times 1 over x plus 1 third times 1 over x minus 2 minus 1 third times 1 over x squared plus 1. Here we have to be careful. x squared plus 1, the derivative isn't just 1, it's 2x, so we need to multiply by 2x. OK, to solve for dy dx, we need to multiply both sides by y. And we'll put in what y is equal to. So our answer, we've got dy dx equals the cube root of x times x minus 2 over x squared plus 1 times this whole thing. So 1 over 3x plus 1 over 3 times x minus 2. Minus, we can put the 2x up top, so 2x over 3 times x squared plus 1. OK, so these are all derivatives that you could take using um, the chain rule. And inside the chain rule, for this last one, you'd have the product rule and the quotient rule. Um, it would be pretty complicated. But by using, by using logarithmic differentiation, we can take things that would be really complicated with our other rules and turn them into just using that log rule. And sometimes, as we saw in this one, a very simple chain rule.